Hello, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. I'm so thankful to have you joining me today. I'm going to be using this Sassy Club stamp set called Feeling Lucky. And to save some time, I've already stamped and colored and cut out all of the images using my brother scan and cut. I absolutely loved coloring these in. I used a mix of Oh Hoo Hoo art markers and a few Copic colors. I only have a few markers in my collection uh, just to fill in some gaps. I also am using my nested A2 arches from scrapbook.com and I cut with the largest size, so the A2 size arch, my, uh, one of my stenciled backgrounds from my earlier video this month. I'm also going to be using it to create my card base as you can see here. Um, and that was the stencil that I used from A Colorful Life Designs. And I'm gonna be making a shaker card as well as a shaped card. So I grabbed a couple fun papers from my Your Paper Insider box and some old sparkle blends, which you cannot get anymore, unfortunately, but uh, I still want to use up what I have in my stash. So just grab your favorite rainbow or clear uh, sequence if you want to replicate uh, this card. So I started with my die cutting. I didn't realize I didn't push record at the time. So, so sorry that I didn't get the die cutting of my background and the white piece that I'm going to glue my background to as well as my shaped card. If you have any questions about how to die cut a shaped card, just let me know in the comments and I will uh, either explain it via the comments or I'll definitely make another shaped card in the future so you can see how to um, die cut it out. Um, with your die cutting machine. So I ended up going with this super sparkly cardstock from the Your Paper Insider box two. I hadn't used it yet and I just really, really wanted to use it. I think it's so fun and so shiny. And because it has like a silver shine to it, I thought it would go really well with those iridescent sequins that I'm gonna be using. I'm also using the largest nested A2 to cut out my acetate. It doesn't cut all the way through, but um, at least it gives me a guide to use my scissors to trim out the acetate. Um, for that sparkly paper to create the frame for my shaker card, I used the largest A2 size of that nested A2 set and the one just smaller than it. So the two largest sizes uh, created that frame and it's about a quarter of an inch frame. So here I am cutting out the acetate since it didn't got cut all the way through, but it does give a very easy impression to trim and that's what I'll use to be the front of my shaker. So now that I have my pieces together, I'm going to realize that I don't have a spot for my sentiment that I want to put on my card and I didn't really want to stamp on acetate. So I decided to grab some vellum. This is also from my Your Paper Insider box. It's a really nice thick vellum and I was going to emboss my sentiment on this was my well that was my like original thought here uh, but I get too excited and want to start building my shaker cards so I forget to stamp my sentiment but that's okay I'm going to uh, come up with a different way to add my sentiment later so I thought I would just save myself the effort of having to trim down this piece of vellum to fit evenly across my background by just using that same large nested A2 die and that way it will fit in between my frame and my acetate, uh, which I will promptly forget once I start adhering my card together, which you'll see momentarily, but that's okay. I recovered just fine. So I'm going to glue my stenciled background. Again, I will have that linked here in the upper right hand corner as well as in my description box if you want to see how my stencil background came together. Um, but I'm gluing it to a piece of thicker, sturdier white cardstock since uh, I made this on some mixed media paper and it's a little bit thinner. Now I'm going to attach my frame to my acetate, which again, I wanted to put the vellum in between these two layers uh, and I forgot, but I will, I'll get it in there. You'll see in just a moment. And I just used some quarter inch, oh, I'm sorry, 
eighth of an inch adhesive. I guess I said that frame was a quarter inch, but I think it's actually just slightly larger than an eighth of an inch. But I used my eighth of an inch adhesive all the way around my uh, frame and then adhered it to the acetate, which thankfully didn't get super sticky and stuck right away. So I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive to my vellum on the two sides and the bottom because it will be hidden beneath my frame. I'll pull up that, um, I'll pull up the backer of my adhesive and then I'm putting it on the bottom of that acetate and then closing it back up. It's sandwiched now inside of my acetate and my frame. I didn't get it perfectly straight. But that's okay. I don't think it's noticeable at the end when my card is all put together. Then I took some thicker foam strips. These are also an eighth of an inch wide and I put it all the way around the arch making sure to hide it behind my sparkly cardstock so you can't see it. I put a bunch of my sequin bits onto my background and forgive my head here but I wanted to make sure I had that nice and straight and centered onto that background. I totally should have used my Misty to help me because it has a nice corner to line things up, but I didn't grab it, <laughs> but it worked out just fine. So now I'm going to glue my shaker to my card base. Again, my shaped card base using the same nested A2 dies, and I'm just lining those up so that way it fits perfectly, and you can see that the fold is there for the top folding card. I'm shaking my shaker to make sure none of my sequins are flying out and I don't have any issues with my card. So now that that is all put together, I'm going to work on my layout. I absolutely love this cute little leprechaun and all these little marshmallows. And I decided to look up how the marshmallows line up on this particular cereal box um, because they go around the leprechaun's head kind of like in a rainbow. And that's what I was going for with this arch on the card. So I wanted to get the marshmallows in the same order as the cereal box. So I had that up on my screen, um, on my computer to the side and then lined everything up. He also has a yellow cereal bowl, which I think actually might be like a yellow pot of gold on the cereal box, but I'm going with a yellow bowl of cereal. And then I had this cute little four leaf clover, which I guess I could have colored to be the cereal, but I liked that it was green like my little leprechaun. So I'm just gonna put that um, near my cereal bowl just to have a little bit more uh, lucky looking, you know, fun on this card. So once I have, you know, where I know all the marshmallows are going to go, I started with gluing down the rainbow and the star since they were on the bottom, and then I glued the moon and the hat since they were on the top, and then that way I could kind of center and space out evenly the other four marshmallows. I'm just using some wet adhesive so it gives me some time to move around my images before they are like you know stuck forever with the glue and then I'm using my grid on my glass board mat here to make sure my leprechaun is centered. I'm going to use some thin foam adhesive to pop up my cereal bowl as well as my little green clover there. I didn't really want to add too much more dimension since usually the foam I use for adhering shaker cards together is already a thicker foam, but I just wanted a little bit more elevation with that cereal bowl. So I went ahead and just grabbed my foam squares that are the like thinner foam adhesive from, I believe it's scrapbook adhesives. So once I have my cereal bowl and my little clover on, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit here because I'm going to do some embossing for my sentiment. I'm grabbing a banner die from Lawn Fawn and I will be using some red cardstock also inspired from the cereal box and I'm going to stamp my You're My Lucky Charm sentiment um, onto this banner after I die cut it out and I will stamp with embossing ink and use white embossing powder. So I was originally planning to stamp this sentiment right there on the bottom of that vellum sheet so it would be underneath the cereal bowl, but like I said, I was so excited to put the shaker card together and then I forgot to add the vellum and then I was worried about my you know vellum not being sandwiched in between the frame and the acetate that it just slipped my mind. But no problem. I'm using my small 
clearly amazing mat or the mini size because it fits nicely inside of the mini misty and that way it will hold my banner in place without having to use too many magnets um, to stamp my sentiment down just in case I needed to stamp it twice. I'm using my Kindred Stamps embossing ink, which actually is a pretty darn good ink and it stamped really nicely the first time. So I'll go ahead and lift it out and then I will use my white embossing powder. I do like to use ultra fine embossing powders for sentiments and sometimes the font could be really hard uh, to read if you don't use an ultra fine embossing powder. So this one is by Ink on 3 and again it's in white. Once my sentiment has cooled down, I'm just grabbing a little Swiffer cloth to wipe off any of that excess anti-static powder from my little embossing tool before I stamped my sentiment. And then I was going to glue it straight down, but I decided to also pop it up with those same thin foam adhesive so it's on the same kind of elevation as my cereal bowl and then just doing my best to center it to the card base and in between the frame that super shiny frame and my cereal bowl. So here's how my cute little shaker card turned out. I like that it has the clear sequins and it hides really well behind that vellum so it's kind of a surprise when you shake it and see all those pretty sequins come up. Again they have a very beautiful iridescent shine to them and it also allows that rainbow background to really still stand out on the card. I hope you enjoyed this shaker card tutorial and that you try this out yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.